One of the things that um, people oftentimes kind of convolute is they kind of mix the fact that something is A, used medically, and or if something is legal, and that makes it automatically good for everyone all the time. So the facts are that cannabis can be used in a lot of different fashions that are very productive, and it also can be used recreationally for some people without effect, negative consequence, and it also can be used really, really detrimentally um, for young people in particular because it can slow and uh, damage their uh, development emotionally, even possibly um, cognitively, but also it, it can really affect a person's ability to be effective, useful, and successful in their lives. Uh, depend, and it more depends on how you use it than if you use it. So the fact of marijuana's natural um, um, roots, you know, is oftentimes really used as a smokescreen to kind of avoid the, 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 the real question at hand, which is, is marijuana good for me? premise of the conversation is you are invested in your well-being, you're invested in growth, um, and that you're open to the truth, and that the truth is more complex than some type of generalized yes or no answer. So the answer is cannabis is a thing that God put in the world, and the question is how can we utilize it in a way that's effective? I'm sure there are a lot of things that God put in the world, right? Saying that baseball bats are natural is not a good reason to smack myself in the head with baseball bats. Well, utilizing marijuana in a recreational manner or even in a functional manner to try to open up pathways could be theoretically a reasonable thing to do in the right environment but if you're only able to be artistic on marijuana you're, that's probably a good sign that you need to you know take a, a firmer look at your relationship with marijuana because you've lost sense of your own skills, your own artistic uh, message. And sometimes, to be honest, um, you know, you're, you might be missing out on some really amazing art that's kind of like stuffed down because you only engage the artistic areas of your brain high. And there might be art that's not emerging because you're just too lost kind of uh, in, in, in the pot. People commonly drink because they feel depressed, right? To cope with depression, but drinking alcohol is a depressant, right? It only really makes you more depressed than you were in the first place. A lot of that is, again, if you're self-medicating, this is why you want to be utilizing a medical professional. You want to be seeking help from a doctor. The point is, at a young age, you don't want to be utilizing a substance to cope with anxiety without support. The other thing to consider is that utilizing other types of supports to cope with anxiety is actually much more functional. Meaning, the use of medication alone to address anxiety for the most part creates more anxiety. Right? People oftentimes get lost in trying to reduce their anxiety completely, treat their anxiety completely with medication. What occurs is, is A, they become a, they, 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 the medication becomes less and less effective, the impact of the medication is less and less effective, and the anxiety tends to grow because they're not really addressing the anxiety, they're just reducing the experience of the anxiety. They're not getting rid of the underlying reasons that the anxiety is, is emerging. Right? So medication can be a useful tool as part of a comprehensive plan to address something like anxiety, but the more effective steps that a person can take to address anxiety come from psychotherapy, meditation, uh, mindfulness, um, physical exercise, healthy diet, etc., etc. You get much more benefit out of that. So if you rely on marijuana and that withholds you, which often is what happens when people self-medicate or just rely on medication, withholds you from taking the steps you need to develop the skills that are necessary to cope with the anxiety that you have, and then also to kind of uncover perhaps some of the underlying traumas that are that are triggering that anxiety is really actually hurting you because you're not you're just kicking the can down the road and you're not actually addressing the issue at hand. 
even though marijuana is perhaps safer in some ways than other substances, it, in many ways it can also be dangerous, right? It's safer to not use marijuana than to use marijuana, right? For example, when you're operating a motor vehicle or you're doing something else, which people lose sight of. The other thing to consider, and this a lot of this has to do with other variables in your life, which is oftentimes an important thing to consider when you're discussing marijuana use is that you can't just talk about marijuana. It's really a discussion about the individual that's thinking about using marijuana. So for example, marijuana use for adolescents is much, much more, or it seems to be, this. the, the, the data seems to imply that there's a heightened um, impact for adolescents, you know, people that are still kind of in that neurological development stage. Slowing the decision making of an adolescent, which is already kind of um, likely to be impulsive, is not the best idea. So marijuana use for an adolescent is much more destructive than it is for an adult. You know, and marijuana use can be destructive for an adult as well. A lot of it has to do with when you're using, how you're using, how much you're using, and what you're using for. Meaning, to what degree are you are you saying you're using marijuana recreationally when you're really using it um, so in a self-medicating manner, right? So you could hide behind recreation, and that's not really recreation. Oftentimes, people think, "Oh, I only smoke." on the weekend. But what does that really mean? Because the weekends start Thursday night for a lot of people, right? So they're smoking Thursday and then Friday and then Saturday and then Sunday and then sometimes Monday morning to get over the weekend, right? So when you start to kind of really document, and that's something you have to kind of look at yourself and be honest, because people tend to kind of lose sight of that. There's only seven days in the week. And if you're smoking Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and maybe Monday, you know, there's only two days a week you're not smoking, right? So, so that's kind of a consideration that you have to have. The other thing you have to consider is, okay, what are the activities that you're engaging in in the weekend, and are you creating a situation where you don't know how to engage those activities without getting high, like having fun or relaxing, right? If you start to regulate your, your, your neural pathways and your associations so that you only relax with weed, your body, your brain will forget how to relax, right? So if you're doing that, right, so, so even only using every weekend, can be very, very damaging. Your brain can become used to holding emotional distress in until a certain part when you know you're gonna use. It's common for like functional addicts and alcoholics. They might not use, they might withhold themselves from engaging in substance abuse or substance use for stretches of time, four or five days at a time, and then they kind of let loose. And generally speaking, what happens is when they let, they let loose, they end up overusing or they end up having other consequences like they, they're, they're drunk or high, and then suddenly they're lashing out at people that they love because they're holding on to uh, anger and resentments that they were bottling up all week. There's a couple of, of issues at play. First of all, it's the legal issue. The reality is, is that marijuana is legal in certain places, but not in all places. And engaging in illegal behavior tends to kind of lead to the engagement in other legal behavior and tends to shift how we associate ourselves. When we kind of associate ourselves as on the other side of the law, we, we, we become suspect of, um, of criminal justice, uh, in, um, personnel like police, certain things start to become possible that weren't possible before. That is a way in which marijuana use can kind of be a gateway. The other gateway is if you get used to using substances, for many people, this is not for everybody, Sometimes getting high gets boring, and then it leads to abusing other substances. That's a very common occurrence. Or sometimes people will get used to getting high, and then scale back, and then shift addictions, or dependencies, or unhealthy attachments. A lot of kids cite that fact, the fact that marijuana is not addictive, as a really good excuse to engage in some really self-destructive behavior. So the thing to kind of consider when you think about marijuana, and then we'll talk about how marijuana affects adolescents, young people in particular, is that marijuana is not physically habit-forming, which means certain substances, the way that the brain operates, certain substances induce uh, a, a, an addiction to them, right? Which means that your body becomes regulated to having that substance in, in your system, and if the substance is not there, you'll experience withdrawal symptoms, physical withdrawal symptoms. So people kind of look at that, that at one aspect of addiction, right, which addiction means the person is dependent upon the drugs, meaning the fact that they're physically dependent, they need the drug in order to, to not experience medical consequences, 
right, as the determiner of, it, of how something is addictive. But the issue is, is that marijuana is extremely psychologically addictive, right, which is that because you can function on it for the most part, and because it, it kind of gives you a sense of elation and comfort, um, and the high is not restrictive the way that some other highs are, it's very common for people to become very, very dependent on marijuana for things like we talked about earlier, like being artistic or dealing with stress or coping with uh, challenging or scary situations or emotional pain, right? So you're much more likely to kind of fall into those patterns as opposed to other drugs. And when you kind of start to talk about adolescents uh, and young adults who are really at the peak stage of you know, the emotional development and social development, meaning, you know, adolescents are, are right there where they're really starting to figure out how to form healthy attachments in their social environment, right? The use of marijuana extensively can really, really create a lot of um, uh, an emo emotional and psychological dependency, meaning I don't know how to go to a party without a drink or without getting stoned. And if I continue to repeat that behavior, I create dependencies where I, a person can't go to a party ever maybe not for the rest of their lives, because they kind of create this dependency that they can't ever break without a lot of effort, right? So kind of making this blanket statement that marijuana is not addictive is just, is, is confused. Useful tool as part of a comprehensive plan to address something like anxiety, but the more effective um, uh, steps that a person, the more effective steps that a person can take to address anxiety come from psychotherapy, meditation, uh, mindfulness, um, physical exercise, healthy diet, et cetera, et cetera. You get much more benefit out of that. So if you rely on marijuana and that withholds you, which often is what happens when people self-medicate or just rely on medication, withholds you from taking the steps you need to develop the skills that are necessary to cope with the anxiety that you have, and then also to kind of uncover perhaps some of the underlying traumas that are, that are triggering that anxiety is really actually hurting you because you're not, you're just kicking the can down the road and you're not actually addressing the issue at hand.